Hi, today I'm going to talk a little bit about the different creep mods that are available in ANSYS Mechanical. And if you look at the ANSYS manual, you will see that there are a lot of different creep mods available that you can use. And um, here I copied the first 11 that are available. And this happened to be the, the ones that I have implemented uh, in M calibration for direct use. But there's so many of them. So which one would you use? Uh, why would you use them? Which one should you not use? That's what I want to talk about today. So before we get into all of that, let's talk a little bit about creep in general. So creep behaviors um, is typically described in the graph similar to this one. This is what I was taught when I was uh, in, in grad school and undergrad. And uh, that there, if you plot the creep strain or the tool strain under a creep test, it's really three different regions to it. It's primary creep, secondary creep, and tertiary creep. So in the primary creep, the rate of creep deformation is decreasing. And then secondary creep, it's a constant creep rate. And then it accelerates at the tertiary creep up to failure. But note here, this is strain versus linear time. So this is based on the assumption that under secondary creep or steady state creep, the creep strain increases linearly with time. And that may be true for certain metals, but it's not certainly true for polymers in general. It may be true, but many times for larger time domains, it's not true. So that's a little bit of a problem if we want to apply these creep models to polymers, as I will talk about later. Um, let's go through some of the different models that are available in ANSYS. Here's the first one, the strain hardening model. And the creep rate here, the rate of change of strain, of the creep strain, is proportional to the stress raised to a power. It's proportional, in this case, to a strain itself, the creep strain raised to a power, and then a temperature dependence. If you get rid of the creep strain dependence, making C3 equal to zero, then the creep strain rate, as long as the temperature is constant, will be constant. So there will be a constant slope of strain versus time if you plot it that way. So that's an easy way to understand how this kind of behavior works. The purpose of the C3 term here is to, first of all, C3 has to be negative, and that makes the creep rate a little bit higher at small times, and then it reaches more of a plateau. So this is uh, often uh, used for primary creep if C3 is equal to a negative number. So this is pretty useful for the perspective, and I, I kind of like this a model that's available in ANSYS. A version of what this model is exactly the same as the previous one. This is time hardening, but you replace the strain dependence with a time dependence. And this is very tempting because you often measure the creep strain as a function of time. So why don't have the creep strain rate depend on time? And by doing that, you can also tailor the shape of this curve. Um, the problem here is that if you set stress equal to um, zero, then you will get no creep strain, of course. But what happens with the creep strain rate, um, if you hold the part under zero stress for some time, of course, time will increase, and therefore this creep strain will be dependent on how long this part were, were sitting on your table under zero stress. So time is really weird because you don't want your material model to suddenly behave differently if it's exposed to zero of stress conditions for different times. That just doesn't make much sense. So, so that's, a, that's kind of a cheating a little bit when you write the creep, a creep equation by including time directly in the creep equation. You need to be very careful when you use such a model in a finite element simulation because many steps, depending on how long they are, will influence the creep response. So I try to avoid those where we have explicit time dependence in the creep equation. Here's another creep model. It's number three in ANSYS. It's a pretty odd material model. It has uh, stress to power. Then uh, R is this other function, both depends on stress and temperature. And then E raised to this R again. So it, it's kind of an interesting uh, mix match that someone came up with. Um, but I would, again, uh, uh, not use it very easily because it has this direct temp time dependence in it. Next one is called Generalized Graham. It's a, it's a convenient one. If you really want to use time as part of your creep equation, then this, this one, but I would try to avoid it because of that. Uh, number five is Generalized Blackburn. 
Here is a model that is really odd, in my opinion. If you set uh, the stress to be zero, you would expect the strain rate, the creep strain rate, to be zero. So, but that's not the case here. Even at zero stress, you will get a finite creep strain that happened to be equal to C6, one of the parameters. So, okay, uh, that seems a little bit odd. So it's more of a, perhaps it works at uh, other conditions, but it's not super gen generic, in my opinion, or, or general, in that uh, you get a non-zero creep rate at zero stress. Uh, that seems not to uh, sort of be good enough for me. Number six is modified time hardening. So this is very similar to the first time hardening model that I talked about. Uh, it just has slightly different parameters. So since it's the same, really, why would you use it? Uh, maybe you like these parameter sets better than the, 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 the generic one, uh, but I wouldn't use it because it seems more complicated to me. Similarly, the modified strain hardening model has a stress to power, strain to power, and E, uh, e de exponential dependence on the temperature. So it's very similar, if not actually functionally identical to the strain hardening model. It just looks more complicated. If you like that, go for it, but I don't see a particular reason for it. Next one is the generalized Garofalo. So this is a sin h model, so hyperbolic sine. And that's kind of nice because the hyperbolic sine function is zero if the argument is zero. So this one passes that test. And it has an exponential dependence in some sense on stress instead of the, the stress raised to a power. So this is a, a complement to the strain hardening model. And I kind of like this one course of that, they're a, a good idea. It, it doesn't have any strain dependence or temperature dependence, so it will be a secondary creep or steady state creep kind of model, as we talked about earlier. Uh, the next one, it's a long list here, right? Exponential form is this called. And um, again, it's really odd. If you set stress equal to zero, you get a finite creep rate. I don't like that. So if you like that, go for it. I don't like it. I wouldn't use it. And Norton is very well known. I, I use Norton creep for this. So this is just a simplified version of the strain hardening model. It is a steady state creep model because there is no strain or time dependence to it. But I wouldn't use it because I would use the strain hardening, which would allow me to also add strain dependence if needed. So this is a simplified version of that. So yeah, sure, you can use it, but I, I wouldn't pursue it because of its simplicity. Next one, and this is the last one on my list here today, is a combined time hardening. A lot of stuff going on here. Not quite sure what to make out of it. This could be useful for metals, uh, uh, solder materials perhaps, but I, I don't think I want to use it because it seems to be a lot of parameters for no particular reason to me. So to summarize, there are so many creep models available in ANSYS. Some of them are quite useful for metals, particularly if you want to apply the, the, the thinking I have here, I recommend the strain hardening and the generalized Garofalo models. Um, I recommend trying to ex stay away from creep models with explicit time dependence. You can run into problems with that. Uh, I wouldn't use it unless you absolutely have to. These models are meant to be combined with linear elastic or elastic plastic material models. And uh, as I will talk about in a different video, they are useful and easy to use, but they are not always as accurate as one would like, particularly for polymers. If you have any questions on any of this, you can write them below.